I'd love to introduce our team who have come up with a brilliant design for this new station, which is practically at the heart of the city. Um, we have Mike Lev with Trans Systems, who is uh, the lead engineer in the project. Uh, Ian Kaminsky Coughlin is with SOM Architects, and he's the lead architect. And Omar Alani on the end is going to be our resident engineer doing construction. So, if, for all you construction people out here, you'll be seeing him a lot. Um, I, I know it's late in the afternoon, so we'll get right down to it, and uh, I'll let Mike lead the, um, the presentation of the actual project. So we're going to hit, you know, what we think will be of interest to people, uh, starting with you know, what's out there now, moving to what we're trying to do and what we've designed, and then come back, come back and talk a little bit about how to build it um, at the end with logistics and things like that. Um, and in, I'll talk about the first part, Ian will talk in the middle, and then I'll talk again. Uh, as Rajiv mentioned, this is a CDOT project. Obviously, there will be a lot of interaction with the Chicago Transit Authority because they operate the system um, and they will be the ones permitting access to track and shutdowns and things like that. So just a little bit about the existing station. It was built in 1895. It has not had very substantial modifications since then. So as you can see here, spaces are kind of cramped. Not a lot of queuing by the fare array. Uh, platforms are narrow in peak periods. It's very congested. No ADA access, obviously a big negative. And then this is a free transfer location from the elevator to the subway and vice versa. And the closest subway entrance is also not ADA accessible, even though the Washington station is from the south mezzanine. So um, those are all some challenges. Um, and then here you can see, once you get to the subway, again, as I mentioned, it's not, it's not accessible. Only stair and escalator. So, uh, Ian, if you want to take it from here. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, Rajiv. Um, nice to meet you all today. Uh, so as we were taking on the station design, um, we were struck with the shortcomings of the existing station, obviously. As Mike mentioned, um, it is a very tight uh, platform, not accessible. It's also one of the busiest stations in the network that it's a uh, non-hub. So you see, you know, six of the lines going through, it's trafficked by, you know, r normal Chicagoans like me and you every day, as well as tons of visitors. So um, we really thought this was a great opportunity to bring this station up to modern standards, help it be safe, and um, you know serve all passengers for now and into the future. Yeah. I'm sorry to interrupt. Uh, I think some folks are having trouble hearing because of the volume on them. But would you mind? Uh, do you guys mind doing the handheld when you're up here? I think this, sure. these microphones. Sure. Can we grab that? Okay. Is that better? Yes. Okay. All right. Here we go. Um, so. We were seeking to make the station fully accessible, um, provide improved access to nearby businesses, to really enhance the street level experience. As you all know, it's very dark under the current state um, street station, as well as from a driver experience. It's not the safest. It has a column in the center. Um, so we're looking at improving the, fast, the vehicular flow as well. Um, and in addition to all of that, it's also a sort of gateway and a very uh, prominent moment for everyone that's coming into the loop, sitting with the Chicago Theater with that great view down State Street at, at Lake. Um, one of the opportunities, as you'll see in this rendering, we had was to remove the column in the center of State Street. So that almost 90-foot span is now going clear across state um, and you know, not providing visual obstructions for pedestrians or, or vehicles and the like. Um, you'll also see that we were able to provide a full coverage canopy. And you know that's something that in these harsh Chicago winters and summers, full sun, lots of wind, rain, snow, what have you, um, providing that level of comfort and safety for passengers was one of the things that we first looked at doing. As Mike mentioned, the existing platform, not only is it narrow, but it uh, is very constricted in multiple areas. It's 
not level, frankly, um, and you know, is in need of a good update. So on the right-hand side, you're seeing what is the proposed platform, uh, concrete plank system platform with your two-foot warning strip, um, and then that full coverage canopy and uh, dome going across. Also, in the distance of the picture, you'll see a, the flyover bridge that provides an accessible connection from platform to platform, so if you do hop on, you're going the wrong way, you don't have to go over to the merchandise mart to transfer anymore or go back down to the street. Um, again, you, maintaining some of the character of the loop was very important to us, so we did have a very compact, efficient station design uh, while we are, while we are you know, replacing the current spanning structure and the columns in state. We were also able to integrate some of the historic fabric from the existing station, which was really important. Um, and that's kind of made clear from an aesthetic point of view by using a different uh, black paint system on the small mini canopy over the fair arrays there. Um, you'll also see a quite transparent, glazed, uh, full dome system there uh, going over both tracks and the platforms. Um, but we did seek to maintain a high level of transparency so that the uh, historic context is still highly visible. There was also an opportunity to um, sort of highlight the moment as you go over state and act as a, as a sort of platform um, for the public to get a good view looking up and down. The design of the canopy itself, we were ultra focused on being hyper efficient and um, very rational. So all of the panels are the same size except those that are at the end, which are kind of snipped off in triangular elements. Otherwise, they're a you know, typical module, easily replaceable, single pane of glass, um, and with the same frit as well. So that consistency um, and the ability for ease of maintenance and continuity, I think, um, was something that we really sought to do. At the platform level, um, you'll see in the center of the station, there's an increased number of fare arrays to recognize the increased capacity that's required. Um, wide stairs going down to all four corners, and um, two elevators uh, adjacent to the State and Lake Building and the Renaissance Hotel. And on the other side, uh, facing towards the east, we have two escalators. Um, since, do, you know, based on census model data, we saw that that's where the highest population is, and maybe if you've used the station, you're, a lot of people we know are going towards Michigan in the mornings or coming from that way. So try to be very responsive to the context historically, and as well as all of the passenger needs. Zooming in a little bit just to that center um, platform area, we were, we were proposing to use a different paving material in the unpaid area. Um, there is opportunity for historic signage and a bit of educational program about the loop network as well as the station that was there itself, um, as well as updated uh, egress stairs, utility closets, um, electric substations and the like. The station does touch the ground. Uh, we tried to make it as light as, it, as possible um, while providing the elevator access and pulling it as far away from the existing um, buildings as possible. So kind of zooming in, uh, there were a number of pinch points at the street level. If you've used the station, you know it gets down to almost six feet in some areas and uh, can be very tight. Uh, so we did seek to kind of make the station, the sidewalks adjacent to the station as wide as possible, um, while also actually increasing pedestrian safety by decreasing the width of the pedestrian crossings in Lake and State. And uh, Michael, talk a bit more about what's going on at ground level and how we're trying to improve the experience there. Again, those escalators facing towards the east pulled as uh, much towards the center of the street as possible. We've met with all build, the building owners uh, multiple times of all four corners to you know, understand their concerns and the ways that they use the buildings and the adjacent entrances to make sure that the station wasn't impeding um, their operations either, but hopefully improving that public realm. Mike, did you want to talk about street safety? And then... Sure. <clears throat> As Ian mentioned, uh, we will, the columns that are in the middle of the intersection, you see with the plus signs there, will be removed and the whole, the whole uh, span will be replaced with a single span. Additionally, as you can see here, the crosswalks will be about half the length that they are now, supporting the city's Vision Zero network, or uh, Vision Zero goals. 
as Ian mentioned, we created additional sidewalk space by putting in bump outs, so that creates additional circulation space. Uh, there was previously some turn lanes and some parking and actually some no parking zones, so it really seemed like an opportunity to sort of better use space that was already out there. And here you see an overhead. Um, in addition to just sort of utilitarian improvements, there's also some beautification that's happening. There's an existing median on the north side, but it doesn't come all the way to the intersection, and that will be extended to the, all the way to the intersection and also make that median ADA accessible, which it's not currently. And then additionally, a new median will be constructed south of the intersection uh, we heard from the public that there are a lot of people running out in the middle of the street to take their photo in front of the Chicago Theater Marquee. So this is an effort to provide them a much safer place to do that. Uh, this rendering isn't quite accurate, actually. Um, this rendering is better. It shows, this shows more of the design we landed on. Uh, but you can see there people can take selfies and whatever. <laughs> My daughters would be all over it, I'm sure. Um, yeah, and here you can see the north median. Uh, this will be extended farther south and it'll provide that pet refuge in the middle of the crosswalk that you saw in the plan view. Something else intriguing about the design, uh, if you see up in the top right corner here, there's what we're calling viewing platforms in the unpaid area of the station. So, if you go up to station level, both looking north and south, you'll be able to see out, um, take photos, whatever. Uh, we think it's, it'll be a really exciting place to be. As Ian mentioned, it's kind of dark under the L right now. Uh, we will be, this, the project will improve lighting primarily by installing uh, underpass lighting mounted to the structure. There will be some relocation of existing uh, taller poles and combination traffic signal light poles as well. Being in the downtown area, there are some sidewalk vaults. Um, most of them, the ones in blue you see here, we're leaving as is. The ones in red will be either fully reconstructed or partially reconstructed as part of the project. And then I mentioned earlier, the subway is not accessible at this location. Here's a rendering of the new elevator looking like the other State Street elevators that you see on the red line. This one goes down to mezzanine level. And then uh, here's a plan view. So that elevator you just saw is in the top right oval. And then in the much larger left oval, that's the elevator that will go from mezzanine down to platform. So bear in mind that is under the middle of State Street, so State Street needs to be excavated in order to build that. Uh, that is obviously a, a big part of the project. Okay, so moving into how will this get built, or at least how do we foresee that this will get built. Uh, this, this chart is in the plan set. Um, the main takeaways you should have here is the station, the elevated station will be allowed to close for three years, nominally. We've provided a period for permitting at the beginning before the station closes. Um, you can see the various work happening. The subway work is dissociated, dissociated from the elevated work insofar as, well you can't, obviously can't have track access at both locations at the same time. There's nothing about the elevator or the subway that sort of precludes working on one or the other. As you see here, we assumed that the subway work would be more or less in the middle of construction. Basically, once the structure of the elevator was done, the subway would happen. It doesn't have to be that way necessarily, although there are requirements. Once you start digging in State Street for how fast you have to be done and have it back open to traffic. Utilities are out there now, relocating. They have been for almost a year now. Um, you, all the private utilities will be relocated by this uh, construction, by the Thanksgiving moratorium this year. Water main relocation is included in the contract. 
Obviously, there will need to be some CTA shutdowns. This also is in the plans of what's permitted in terms of shutdowns uh, in order to be able to construct this work. Um, obviously, this is all subject to CTA approvals and other work that may be occurring on lines elsewhere. Uh, but you can see there's a number of weekend or Sunday closures. Uh, there is a closure of the subway mezzanine for a period of time while the uh, new roof is being built over the existing stair and escalator. Something that's not shown here, although it is in the plans, um, the, the, uh, that span replacement over State Street, there's a provision that if it occurs over a holiday period, basically Labor Day or Memorial Day, there could be a third day of closure as opposed to just the two. So something to keep in mind from a scheduling standpoint. Traffic underneath. So there's two configurations that will be sort of alternating. So obviously there's this complete closure situation. This will be required at certain points when beds need to be shored or certain other work. Um, however, the default condition should be one through lane. This is primarily because there needs to be access um, where you see the State Lake building on the bottom here. They that's WLS TV. They operate their news broadcasting out of this location. They have a driveway there where their news vans come in and out, so they need access all the time. So even when it's closed, they still need access. Um, but because of that, this is the default condition, and it's only when you know, conditions ne necessitate that um, the complete closure would happen. This is what the detour will look like. Similar to what was done when Washington Wabash was built, there will be decorative canopies over the sidewalk to protect pedestrians on Lake Street. Um, you can see here a photo of an installation. Um, we think it's an opportunity to do something maybe exciting, a little bit unusual for in the city uh, in terms of how scaffolds are built. So um, you can see here a photo of, of one option of, of what will be allowed. There you see the layout. These are not required on State Street because there's not overhead work on State Street. So State Street work, one lane each direction has to be maintained at all times on State Street because there's a substantial amount of bus traffic and other traffic on State Street. It's too big of a thoroughfare to be closed, except during weekend closures of the CTA when there's lifting of big structural elements going on, obviously it has to be closed then. But uh, during work on State Street, we anticipate two phases. So here you can see this is the mezzanine to subway elevator construction and corridor. Uh, obviously a lot of braced excavation will be required to build this. And then the other elevator, um, the sidewalk to mezzanine elevator. See in both cases, at least one lane, each direction on State Street is maintained. As I mentioned, during those weekend shutdowns of the CTA, this would be the, the you know, roadway traffic would be detoured also, and this would be the detour. So just closing out with a couple of coordination items. There is a public art component to this project. There will be sculptures installed in four locations on the platform. It's a little hard to see, but there's black asterisks up in the top right there where they're going to go. DKs has issued a separate RFP to select an artist, uh, to, to, uh, to commission an artist to fabricate these and, and deliver them. There's a certain amount of interaction that will need to happen between contractors and the DK's artist because these are supported on the precast planks. So the artist will devise how they need to be mounted and what the loading is. I'll actually go to the next slide. The artist will, de will design it, tell the contractor, hey, this is what the precast needs to do in order to support it. And then the two will need to work together um, ultimately with the artist delivering those sculptures to the site and then the contractor installing and protecting those pieces of art um, you know, once they're delivered. 
Another coordination item, uh, FTA has a safety and security certification requirement for this project. Uh, there are dozens, if not a couple hundred pages in the specs about this. But basically there are certain elements of the station that need to be safety certified and the contractor will need to work with everybody else involved in the project to ensure that that certification happens. Some of it will be in terms of documentation of manufacturing processes and other testing. It is important that that happen along the way and not all at the 11th hour, otherwise you know, there won't be enough time left to finish it. So with that, we think it'll look great. Somebody want to moderate Q&A? Uh, before we go to the Q&A, if you guys don't mind, just uh, join me in uh, giving a hand to our uh, moderator. Uh, if anyone has a question, just raise your hand. I'll come around with the mic. You guys got all that for real? <laughs> I assume uh, FDA funding, so it's going to be DBE participation? Correct. As the goal and set? Yeah. Uh, yeah, the goals are in process, so we are working uh, most, most of the time, the majority of the contracts, the Fed funded are set at 30% DBE requirements, so that's the 30. 30. Okay. Yeah, so that, that's the requirement trying to meet on this project. Got it. So. And one last question we mentioned, um, the utility work that's ongoing, done by Thanksgiving, who's, uh, who's the contractor? So there's several contractors, there's each individual utility is hired their own contractor. There will be utility coordination even with, um, especially on State Street, there's a portion of this, the water main that needs to be relocated before. So it's not, it won't be complete, complete. There's coordination that will happen during the project as well, but currently I think Western is doing some work for the, um, for the telecoms and ComEd Intran, who's doing comments? Yeah. yeah Intran is doing comment. Yeah. So the, the, the telecoms all banded together and, and um, hired Western, and Intran's doing comment. Yeah, to expound upon what Rajiv said, in addition to some waterman work, there is a comment line on State Street that will need to be temporarily relocated. It can't move until much closer to when construction is starting because they will need to temporarily bury the manholes while it's being relocated. Do we have any other questions? No? All right. Oh, oh. Hi there, uh, Casey Weigel with O'Neill. Two questions. Um, will the work be delivered under a lump sum cost for the work or a GMP? Currently the schedule of prices has a lump sum, similar to the other transit projects that have gone up. Okay, thank you. And then is there a date for when the bid advertisement will be released? No, so the, it, it's still under review right now. So we're anticipating hopefully within uh, 30 days from now we should have uh, uh, this set out to solicit for solicitation, so. And it, it'll be a low base bid on it. Last call for questions? All right, hearing none, uh, thanks again to our moderator and panelists for today's presentation. We hope you enjoyed it, and uh, please enjoy the rest of the Thank you.